14th. Okay, so we have a pretty interesting day on our hands. Reason being, of course, we've been building towards the first quarter moon popping off in Virgo energy that will definitely set the tone here today. Seeing as, of course, Mercury, ruler over Gemini season in his rulership in Gemini and ruler over the Virgo energy that the moon is in, has everything to do with this first quarter moon. So we can expect an action point, a decision point, an epiphany point coming out of this tension, this conflict between our heart and our head, between our inner realm and our outer realm. And then just as that pops off, we sit in that for a couple of hours and then we have a huge interaction between Mercury and the Sun. This is a conjunction, a Kazemi or a Kazemi, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Either way, there's a light bulb moment. There is new insights. There are new epiphanies popping off. Our mind clears. There is a situation, a circumstance that will become more and more clear to us on what needs to be done. And this particular energy is definitely going to pressurize the headspace that has definitely kind of gained too much pressure over this Gemini season putting us in a totally different perspective. This is the day that we've been waiting for. It may not come all at once, but the trigger point, the activation point is definitely here. Just as we close out the moon in Virgo, we shift into that Libra energy. And that particular transit going from Virgo energy to Libra energy finds balance, finds peace, finds harmony, finds compromise in the new epiphanies that are going to be popping off. So with all of that being said, the moon is going to go void, of course, at 1.54 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Libra energy at 2.13 p.m. We have a, I'm going to call it a very revealing day on our hands. We're definitely going to have to pay attention. We have to be mindful. We have to be aware. There's definitely going to be hints and clues coming at us in very interesting ways. So there are 12 different aspects popping off here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. 1.19 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon in this Virgo energy going to get into the boxing ring, square off with the sun in Gemini energy. This is what gives us our first quarter moon. Does the square feel good? No. Is it supposed to? Absolutely not. Does it create a lot of tension and conflict when between our heart and our head? 100% absolutely. It is a growing pain. Something's got to give. We're processing. We're weeding out. We're analyzing. We're figuring out different paths, different plans, different strategies that we could possibly take in order to create a different result. The first quarter moon is a time of action, time of decision, time of epiphany. And with all of this mercurial energy, we are definitely going to receive a lot of insights. The moon in Virgo then goes ahead and trines Uranus, Uranus being the great awakener in the Taurus energy, definitely going to continue to open the channels to the highest realm of our intellect in order for new insights, new epiphanies, new aha moments to absolutely channel through. This is an awakening energy. This is a new level of awareness. This is a new level of consciousness. Seeing things from a new set of eyes, a brand new perspective. A trine is a gentle nudge in the right direction. We are planning, strategizing with these new perspectives, these new insights, this new information, this new realization on what it is that we need to do, what it is that we need to pursue. The moon, and then going to get into the boxing ring, square off with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who's also in this Gemini energy. Now, Venus rules over Fridays. So Fridays are supposed to be happy, go lucky. They're supposed to be focused on having fun, on really enjoying ourselves. But Venus in this Gemini energy, we haven't really been doing a whole lot of happiness and joy and pleasure and fun. We've been trying to debate what we need to be doing in order to create a happier realm, a happier reality in our future. The Gemini energy has us very divided on what it is that we want, what it is that we need, what it is that we absolutely desire. Again, a square does not feel good. Emotionally speaking, we're at odds with ourselves. Do we continue doing what it is that we've been doing and continue to get what it is that we've already got? Or 
Are we going to try something different? Are we going to follow our heart space, our higher self and pursue something new to really push the boundaries of what it is that makes us happy, who makes us happy? And again, considering where it is that we're coming from, now we have a choice on where it is that we would like to go from here. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Fresh in this Taurus energy, a little bit stubborn, a little bit hell-bent, definitely damn well and determined to see something through. This is actually going to work for us because, again, we're still in the fixing arena of having the moon in this Virgo energy. New epiphanies coming in. New passion projects finally emerging, new details, information, really promoting new inspirations, new excitement that we 100% want to pursue. This is kind of getting our fire all revved up in the right ways in our inner realm, kind of helping us to focus on what needs to be done. 12.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in his rulership in Gemini energy and over Gemini season, coming up to bumping into, teaming up with the sun in Gemini energy as well. This is the epiphany. This is the aha moment. As we've been discussing, conjunctions are just as much an ending as they are a beginning we are closing the door on confusion. We're closing the door on old options, old opportunities. We're opening the door up to new perspectives, new aha moments, new epiphanies, new information, new details, therefore new options, new opportunities to actually move on, move forward. Now, side note, this is going to have a huge amount of pressure on the headspace. So dizziness, uh, feeling confused, yet kind of gaining a little bit of clarity at the same time, feeling that head pressure, that headache worm that we talked about in the Ascension forecast for this week, all highly probable under this particular influence as there is so much focus, energy, tension in that headspace. 1.54 p.m., we have the moon in Virgo sitting directly across and opposing Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is the last aspect that the moon in Virgo is going to be making before going void, of course, and an opposition means that we're not feeling so good. We're not feeling so hot. Let's talk about it. The moon in Virgo has us very much aligned with logic and practicality. Neptune, on the other hand, in Pisces energy, wants us to focus on our intuition, wants us to focus on the alignment, the guidance, the insight that we're receiving from our higher self. In opposition does create a little bit of tension in order for us to find a sweet spot. Yes, we have to trust our intuition and our higher self, but we also have to take our brain with us. We have to be using our logical, practical part of our intellect and blending it with the intuitive insights that, of course, we're being downloaded with from our higher selves. This is the particular point where the moon goes void, of course. And again, we lock into the Libran energy at 2.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 5.39 p.m., we have the very first aspect popping off with the moon in Libra, which happens to be a trine, beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who was retrograde in this Aquarius energy. We get the trine because we're dealing with like-minded elements. Libra and energy is an air sign. Aquarius is an air sign. And we have our heart space and our psyche working together in order to uncover where it is that we're flipping the script, where it is that we're overriding negative narratives, where it is that we are honestly seeing our ability to really analyze the inner power struggle going on within us, either between the ego self, the higher self, the old self versus the new self, our inner realm versus our external realm. There's a power struggle going on. And when we're talking about Libra and energy, we just want to bring things into balance. We want to find balance. We want to find compromise. We want to find happiness and joy and pleasure in all in which we're doing, especially where relationships are concerned. So it's almost like we're feeding off of the epiphanies popping off from the earlier aspects in the day. We're starting to see things a little bit differently, therefore approaching things a little bit differently, 
especially we're having conversations in our relationship dynamics are concerned. This is an empowerment energy. We're feeling a little bit more in power and control over our emotions. And therefore, we are feeling confident enough to open up a dialogue to reconcile and rectify some of the issues that we've been banging our head against a wall about. Now, Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger in this Taurus energy is going to semi-square, so creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Saturn, the lord of karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline in this Pisces energy, trying to wrap up a 30-year cycle. Now, this is definitely going to create a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict, a little bit of challenge. Here's the thing. Mars has ants in his pants. He's being slowed down by being in Taurus energy, which is a fixed earth sign. Saturn, who does bring a little bit of a harsh reality check, who likes to pump the brakes on our actions, on our energy to be able to slow down and kind of bring everything full circle. Think very thoroughly about the actions in which we want to take. This is kind of like we're pumping the brakes. Now, let me just remind you that if you find yourself in quicksand, the last thing that you want to do is make sudden movements. You want to stay still. The more you move, the more you push for actions to be taken, the slower the process of actually achieving what it is that you want will be. So this particular energy is almost like we're moving too fast. The epiphanies that are coming in, the clarity that is coming in has us a little bit excited, has us a little bit inspired. Mars, of course, wants to take action and make moves, but we have to pause that out. We have to just slow down. We have to understand that it's not the speed that is going to get us to the destination. It is the clarity on the steps that need to be executed in order to get from point A to point B. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in Gemini energy, going to make a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. That North Node is trying to get us on the right path, trying to open us up to see where it is that we could grow, where it is that we can heal, where it is that we can repair ourselves in the present moment to free ourselves up to actually align with a new quest, a new mission, new potential, a new path for us to be walking. Now, Mercury interacting with the North Node in this way is giving us clarity on what we could do to move forward. What it is that we could start kind of, you know, planning around in order to actually see some progress in a new path, in a new direction. If nothing else, this is opening up our mind, especially with some of the insights that are kind of popping off for us with the earlier interactions between some of these planets, opening up our mind of where it is that we could do things differently, where we could be more independent, where we could embrace and embody our unique individualism in order to kind of, you know, go on this side quest, go on this little adventure that is just for our own soul's mission, our own soul's purpose. Mercury then goes ahead and makes a beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy. So let's talk about this for a second. Uranus is the highest octave of our intellect that connects with the higher realms of information, the higher realms of intelligence. Mercury rules over the lower level of our intellect that connects more to our ego avatar than our higher selves. So the fact that our higher mind and our lower mind are coming together in a beautiful interaction, this is epiphany energy. This is light bulb energy. This is opening up one's mind to seeing where it is that new ways of doing things could be the way to go in order to get a different result, especially where our physical realm is concerned. Why do I say that, you may ask? Well, because Uranus, the great awakener, is in Taurus energy. So this has everything to do with the materialistic realm. This comes down to seeing ourselves from a different set of eyes, being a little bit more optimistic and confident, seeing the worth and value within ourselves. This comes down to maybe seeing where routines need to be switched up, changed in order for us to feel safe and secure and stable and taken care of as we move throughout our day. This could be relationship dynamics, financial matters. It has everything to do with the physical realm. Uranus is opening up our mind 
to seeing where it is that we could make some changes where we could adopt new ways of going about our day here in the physical realm in order to create a different result. This is a powerhouse energy, definitely going to add to the pressure on the head that we're experiencing here today, but is going to reveal some really beautiful insights. Now, shortly thereafter, the moon in Libra energy going to make a really tough interaction with Mars in this Taurus energy. So this is going to bring about some agitation. We're getting ants in our pants. We're getting a little bit frustrated. Why? Well, because we just had a download of information and details that we're really excited to start expanding upon, but we can't do anything right now. Mars is getting anxious. He's anticipating wanting to take action and make moves, but in the fixed Earth energy of Taurus, we're going nowhere as fast. It has to be slow, steady steps, a slow, steady pace, making any kind of change. So the scales that Libra likes to rule over, emotionally speaking, are out of whack right now because emotionally speaking, we have ants in our pants. We want to take action. We want to make moves. We want to see some progress. But of course, we're being stunted out in doing that, which means that we're tapping into the not so nice energy of Mars, which is agitation, frustration, and maybe even a little bit of anger. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Libra energy trining beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Gemini energy. Again, air on air action, a lot going on in the mental plane, a lot of intellect, really pushing into new plans, new variables, new options, new opportunities. Now, first of all, the scales are kind of being retweaked, We're coming out of that bunk, out of that anger, out of that agitation. We're tipping them in the favor of optimism and confidence that guess what? As long as we take our time, as long as we tap into patience, and we give a lot of energy and effort into the planning and strategizing part of this little plan, we are going to be okay. There's going to be opportunities presenting themselves now that we're operating from a higher level of awareness. This is going to kind of reassure us that we're on the right path, that we're kind of, you know, formulating the right plan. This is putting us in a situation where we're tapping into a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom coming from Jupiter that we're able to kind of balance out emotionally speaking with our heart space. So an overly amount of pressure in that headspace that now we're trying to feel good about. And as we feel better about it, we are going to have more and more solid plans be executed. So again, we are in the patience situation right now where we have to walk through our plans and our headspace before we can engage the physical body to actually take action and make moves here in the physical realm.